Where do good ideas come from? They come from, the, let, me, let me say this, I think they come from the soul. You know, and I, I try to describe that as really who you are when you get pressed, who, you know, not, not who you fake or who you pretend to be, but who you really are when the pressure's on. I think that's where good ideas come from. Nothing's impossible if you try. Nothing is possible if you ask the right question. Nothing is impossible if you, you know, invite the right people, you know, to the table. And um, it's a lesson I learned a, a long time ago, and it's a lesson that I'll never forget. Getting involved. In, in civic activity it was it was almost like a spiritual thing. It isn't not like going to church, but it had that it has that same flavor to it. It's like what can you do for the people with whom you live? Because you also are part of a community, and so you what do you do in that community? You can either join a church organization, you can join a nonprofit, you can do something like that, or you can join an organization that helps the community to you know define it's commonly experienced problems and develops over time a consensus solutions. That's what the JCs did, that's what the Citizens League did, and you know, that's my, that's my civic education. I think David is deeply motivated by the idea of, of public service, about making lives better for all of us, and I think it comes out of a, a moral, a faith perspective, and um, I haven't ever seen any deviation from that as long as I've known him. Dave's a very religious man. He's a, uh, a devout Catholic, and he uh, that's part of his identity uh, and part of his cultivating his soul, I would, I would argue. Um, I think you, it's, it's mostly seen in his endurance. He doesn't dominate the conversation. He begins an additive conversation that brings these different, I'd say, strands of, from different people and weaves them into a rope of sorts of a, of a conversation where everybody feels heard. Uh, he's added a layer of wisdom and intelligence to it, and the end result is something that um, is much richer and much more complete than the sum of its parts. I wish we could clone him because he's a collaborator, and, and we have too few of those right now. He's open-minded, and he doesn't come at things from an ideological perspective. A civic leader is somebody who's um, been raised and educated to believe that they've got a responsibility beyond just getting a job and a family and that sort of thing. That community has meaning, that the people next door are, you know, part of your life as well. We must honor our uh, history makers and to have children learn about them and study about them. And Sharon is an excellent example. Having gone from working as a young woman in community centers and with young people to becoming um, a community organizer, then to organize communities in a way that they become politically active and conscious and aware. She's done all of that. My path to, towards civic service really started at a very early age. I grew up uh, in the Rondo neighborhood, and as a young girl, I saw my entire neighborhood um, pretty much disappear because of a public policy decision uh, to run I-94 right through my neighborhood. So it tore down, you know, all of our schools. It ripped out, um, you know, you know, our heart. And when that happens to you as a young girl, you never forget about it. You never forget about it. And for me, I, you know, I really believed that um, my job was to try to make sure that those kinds of things didn't happen again. Sharon, moving from those steps to being the mayor of a great city, Minneapolis, uh, was a, a step forward. With Sharon, um, she had to form a partnerships uh, amongst disparate people for 
all of her time in politics. I mean, the city of Minneapolis is a complicated equation. And I will tell you, when I was first elected uh, the mayor of, of the city of Minneapolis, one of the first things that I did was reached out to the private sector and asked them to help me make this work. And there were a handful of, you know, private sector leaders, many of them men in our community, who said, Sharon, you can count on me to be a part of your team. I promise you, I could never have done all of the things that we were able to do in the city without the public sector, the private sector, coming together to work with me. Her circle is huge, and it also has, uh, it has insights. She has insights into people who are, again, off my radar. So I seek her advice on things having to do with the city of Minneapolis still, and she can offer me insight and help me chart a course where, when I feel like I need help. Citizens Lee demonstrated a great sense of understanding and love for the community. So the Citizens League maintaining that understanding and then honoring Sharon is a, is a very positive expression in my mind of their respect for our community. This is really an honor for me to get to speak about both of them because I just love them both. And um, their qualities are so evident from the moment you meet them, um, how engaging they are, uh, how driven they are, how passionate they are. Um, it's just, it's wonderful. And they, they are obviously very proud uh, Minnesotans and um, have developed great reputations based on that. And you don't have to get yourself elected to anything to make a difference. You just need to find an organization that already is devoting itself to those kinds of issues that don't lend themselves to partisanship. They don't lend themselves to political office, but they lend themselves to sharing what you've learned about life and the importance of life. You know, I always believe that there's hope. Individuals individuals can actually make a difference. Um, if there's a problem with, a, with voices you know, being you know, not heard, what can you do to organize the voices so that they can be heard? If you think you have something special to offer and you know people that have something special to offer, encourage them to get involved in it. And then together you take on these problems. I'm in love with Minnesota. I believe in Minnesota. We can solve our own problems. We probably can help solve problems across the country, and for that matter, maybe around the world. But it starts with us coming together. It starts with us understanding it's not us and them, it's us.